How do you actually find the time to create content on social media, especially videos on a regular basis? This is a big challenge for a lot of early stage coaches that are looking to create a brand, a community online. And it also is quite demoralizing because they feel like they need to be on there every single day for hours at a time. And when you're quite new to any area, it can be quite draining because you might spend one hour, two hours on there and not really feel like you're getting a lot done. Maybe you're engaging with people, but it can feel like it's such a huge area to manage uh, and not being really that sure of what to do, how to do it. And after a couple of months, people often start to distract themselves and procrastinate with creating content. Now, video content is one of the best ways to engage with social media today. A lot of the platforms are prioritizing video-based content, especially with the development of a lot of these AI software programs where you can actually get this content to these um, AI to write a lot of your content for you. Video is the one thing that's currently hard to do. And video is much more engaging. It's much more dynamic. When you listen to somebody speak, you learn about them, their values, their personality, their style. And plus, it's easier to absorb. Typically, people can listen to something in the background and absorb it quite a lot. So I've got four key hacks to help you to remove a lot of this fear of posting content and to get you creating it on a regular basis. Number one is to remove the power that marketing has over you. The amount of conversations I've had with new coaches that have said, I have no idea where to begin with marketing. It's so big, it's scary, and I just don't know where to start. And as a result, they just don't start. It's a real problem. So this is something that you can either give or take power from. So just don't give it all of the power that it might have in a negative way. See it as a conversational tool that you can use to have that conversation with people that might need some help. In the old days, we used to go to live events and have conversations in person and hand out business cards. It's the same thing, but we're just doing it online. And the event space that we're in is the world. And we can do it at home, which is nice for the introverts like me. But just creating that content, don't give it so much strength. Just make it something that is super small and super manageable. All you need to do is think, I'm sharing some ideas today. I'm sharing some stories today from my life. I'm sharing some insights that might benefit other people. Now, at this stage, I often recommend not to worry, which is often one of the big factors for people procrastinating, not to worry about creating really effective content that gets lots of engagement. Now, that sounds counterintuitive, but let's face it. Think about the experience of somebody learning to swim, right? Their main goal is to get into the habit of swimming first before they start thinking about how to do the ultimate breaststroke or the ultimate butterfly stroke. Like that stuff will come down the line, but really they've got to get in and do the laps because once they're comfortable in the pool, they'll start to enjoy it. They'll start to get better at it. They'll build up their cardio and only good things happen from then. So get those laps in. Share a video of your story. Keep it below 10 minutes, maybe even five minutes if you want to just get started in a simple to absorb way for your audience. Put out some tips. What could be some insights to help people? Engage with them, ask questions, and just put that stuff out there, you know, two, three days a week and just get those laps in. After a month or two months of doing this, you will have learned a lot about creating content. You'll feel much better about the idea of creating content. And then we can start thinking about being much more tactical, strategic, and getting more results from that content itself. Number two is scheduling. I do not go on social media every single day. Sometimes there are weeks that go past where I don't engage on social media. But a lot of the content I create, I didn't create that same day. So you don't need to be using social media every day or even every week, if you don't like being on there too much, 
which can free you up to spend the rest of your time growing their business, engaging with people, or even doing the coaching work that you want to do. With a lot of these platforms, and I recommend LinkedIn for building a professional network, it's a really good platform for professional coaches that are looking to build their businesses. There's a scheduling feature, which means that you can create five, six, seven, eight videos on a single afternoon, record them, edit them to make sure the sound is okay, and then simply on one day of the month, upload all of the videos onto you know, the scheduling feature. Maybe you want to post Mondays and Wednesdays every week for four weeks, pretty much the whole month, most of the time. And then add your comments, the content that you want to write in there, and then forget about it entirely. And when you go back onto these platforms, then you'll have a lot of the posts there waiting for you. It frees your brain up to be able to actually do everything at once and it avoids you needing to be on there every single day. Step three is similar to step number two, but more about the mindset of what we're doing here. Each month, I spend one day doing the marketing for my business. This means idea generation, the thoughts, the structure, the tips, the paid advertising, whatever it might be that's important for my campaigns, even the newsletters for our coaching community that goes out. And there's a real strength in doing this because a lot of people find it hard to create a lot of content on a regular basis. But if you're actually sitting down with a piece of paper or a Google document and thinking about lots of ideas, you'll find that a good idea will help you to find another good idea. And we become these idea hunters or story hunters where by doing one, we unlock other ideas. And you can often find three or four wonderful ideas for social media in 10 minutes. You don't need to create all the content up front. You can think about the structure of what you want to say, get it all ready on a piece of paper or on a Google Doc. And then when you've got all the outline done, go on to a Zoom meeting, hit record, and just start recording each of the videos, stopping them after you've finished, and then uploading onto LinkedIn with that previously mentioned scheduling function. You'll find that by doing this, a lot of your brain is freed up a lot for the ideas. You might, over the month, have this idea page open on Google Docs, where you just add in ideas or thoughts or stories that come to mind. So when you get back down to that one day per month, we can then just get everything sorted and done. Again, this is really good for organizing your time. Your brain will start to associate that day with marketing day. And you'll start to get a lot of great ideas coming up. And let's face it, you've got the rest of the month to then relax, enjoy, and do the work that coaches love. And the fourth and final step is actually in the creation of this content and how to create content. Like people regularly say to me, like, what do I post about? Now, for somebody like me, it feels like an obvious and easy question, and it really is, but that's part of the key the question that a question to ask yourself might be what does my audience struggle with what are their goals what might help them with these things and believe me you could literally spend a year creating content with those three simple questions because you might find that there are a hundred different answers to what is my audience struggling with? What are their goals? And what things might help them with these things? So you can be sharing stories. You could be sharing tips and insights with them to help them to move forward. Right, so really simple. And by answering that question, you will know that you're providing value. There's no doubt in your mind that what you're putting out there is credible content because it's going to be literally answering a pain or a gain for your audience, what they're moving away from or moving towards. And that is ideal content for social media. So those are the four things that we've gone through helping you to reclaim some of your power for social media and start creating regular content to build up your audience. We've got removing the power that marketing has over you, learning to schedule that content, 
doing all of your marketing on one day per month and asking simple questions to create powerful content. Okay, good luck with this. It's a really good way to get you moving in the right direction. And let's hear about some of your progress as you go.